everyone. Join me as I'm playing with some of this Cricut film. And a lot of layers of resin. You got bling in here, transparencies, pearls, all kinds of stuff. Hit the subscribe button, hit that notification button too, so you know the next time I put some fun videos out. See you in a moment. Hi everyone. Today I'm gonna to play with some Cricut film. Uh, now Cricut is a device that allows you to cut intricate, detailed uh, designs from the computer or things you've drawn. Uh, and you place it through a device and it will kind of like pinpoint accurately cut out things for you. It really comes in handy for people who are wanting to do lettering or say really fine lace detail or you know, you can go nuts with this. Anyway, but the thing I like about this is this is a holographic film and it has, this particular one is for Opal. I got two packages, but I thought I'd give them a try because this has kind of been going around in the resin world with creating a base and then applying the resin on top of it and getting that little bit of a, an opalescent type of a look through it. And I really like playing with interference in, um, iridescent colors and the light effects of that. So this is right up the alley and I want to take it a, another step. So I grabbed a couple of hearts and I've got a couple of colors here that I've chosen and we're going to cut some film, put it on the hearts and then later on resin them up and see what happens. And I want to try and create some cells that will show the under layering of this as well. So that's the that's the plan. Let's see if Resin has a different plan. Okay, I want to talk it through a little bit about what I did. Um, I'm using an X-Acto knife. And X-Acto knives, you got to be really careful. It has a really nice, let's see if I can get it close here. I can focus. It has a really super nice point to the edge of it. Um, and you can see the blade is fairly thin. So you can do a lot of fine precision cuts. When you're working with paper, you always want to make sure your blade is super sharp. But also, in the meantime, safety-wise, you know, watch your fingers, watch where the blades go. And since we're on the note of safety, what I do is when I have old blades and I want to dispose of them, sometimes the packs where you can buy new blades will come with a little spot where you can put the old blades. And if it doesn't, I get an old prescription bottle with a, um, you know, a safety cap on it. And I put my old sharp points in here. Like I've got sewing needles in here and and old X-Acto blades. So I know they're safe and they can be disposed of easily because you don't want to put these things loose in the trash can and then think, oh, I threw this thing away, I forgot about it. And you go digging around the trash can and yeah, end up on that point. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. So with that in mind. Um, but when you're cutting with an X-Acto knife and around this edge that you saw, I had the point going at a 90 degree angle. And I'm using the wood as a guide. And occasionally you will get some shavings of wood, but just be mindful of the pressure that you're putting on it. And if you start getting shavings, you know to back off just a hair. The other thing is too, you notice this mat here. This is one of those self-healing kind of mats. So you can use a sharp point 
uh, type of a knife with it, like a rotary cutter knife or this type of a knife or even a utility knife on top of it with um, little worries. So, okay, that's all taken care of. Okay, so what I did is I applied this. You saw me uh, get it started, flip the whole board over, and then slowly opening it up while at the same time I'm massaging it left and right. So you don't want to do it real quick because if you do it real quick and, and try to lay the whole thing down, you're going to get big bubbles everywhere. It's just inevitable. Here I have got probably a couple small bubbles that I can work out. Like, I don't know if you can see that little guy there. There's a little bubble. Um, and there's easy ways to work it out, either, either simply massaging it, pushing it to, towards the edge eventually, or you can even use that same X-Acto knife and put a tiny, tiny, tiny little hole there. And boy, that fan up above is distracting with this foil. <laughs> Sorry about that. See, you can even see the camera thing. Okay, reflective films, fun. Um, so you could put a little pinprick uh, from the X-Acto knife into that little bubble there and then massage it out and that bubble will go away. Now green, I'm gonna be covering a lot of this with resin. So even the little bubbles will probably disappear to a point, um, but it's worthwhile. Also, the other thing too is because the wood is a certain thickness, the film is on the top part and there is a possibility of it coming up maybe on the edges. What I'm gonna do with that to make sure everything is nice and adhered well down. It, it feels like it's adhered pretty well right now. But when I'm applying the resin, I'm gonna make sure that I go over the edge. So that way it bonds to not only the top, but the edge as well. So that's my other way of reassuring. And this is uh, my liquid latex. So if you're wondering about this, and there's a, another video on that about how it helps out with cleaning up drips. So I do use this stuff on a regular basis. So on to the next step, and I'll see you later. Hey everyone. Okay, so I've got the Cricut film on the hearts and I'm gonna play with some different colors. Uh, I've got two of the hearts on standby. And I'm gonna use a little bit of a, a glitter in there just cause you gotta have some more fun. Um, kind of a, a nice dark blue for the contrast. Got a transparent color here, the uh, really pretty purple. It's actually a fluorescent too. And I've got a nice shimmer, kind of a mermaid color here. It's really pretty. And a little bit of gold, just a little bit of bright gold there. And then some white, so we can have some fun with some cell effects. So I'm gonna play with this guy and see what happens. So I want to make sure that on this particular piece, because I've got the uh, Cricut film on here, that I'm going to make sure that I get my resin around the edges and that'll kind of help adhere it down. And that's just me making sure. It also gives a nice clean edge too. I'm gonna be adding other colors on top, so we'll have a definite, uh, and that, let me try the words again here. <laughs> the words aren't coming for me today. Um, we'll have plenty of resin on here when I add all the different colors. So, here we go. Clean my hands off real quick. I like to 
do this where I put a little bit of glitter down on the bottom here. And sometimes you get, hopefully that's not too much. Um, Cause I'm gonna use the stone coat uh, white base to help create cells. And sometimes this will help the glitter pop out, you know, from the different layers. So we're gonna have the cricket showing through the cells as well as some of the glitter. And this will move around when I start moving the resin around too, or the colors around. All right, so how do I wanna do this? put a little bit more of the purple over here. This most likely is going to drip off the edge, but if it doesn't, it'll give a nice edge to it. Put the line of the white. And now what we've got in this white is I've got the stone coat base tint, but I've also got a little bit of a white paste because I want the white to show but I want the, the base tint to do its magic. All right, heat that up a little bit. I've got a silicone spatula that I can use for this. And what I do is I have a little bit of a, um, a cup, a little bit of a cup, yeah. Yeah, words are working real well today. Okay, I've got a cup that I use for my excess to scrape off. And then I can use that, pour that straight into molds. And it kind of comes off as a dirty pour. So it's kind of cool. Rotate this around. And the reason I'm rotating it around is because my hand naturally wants to move this direction. And for me to move the other way would be awkward and I wouldn't get a nice smooth curve. See, that got a little jumpy there. All right. So that's a good place to start. I'm going to add a little bit more purple over here. Do a little bit more. Hopefully, I'm not overdoing it. Oop, nope, that worked out just fine. Okay. Wait, sometimes you got to remind yourself to breathe a little bit too. Ah. 
I think that is just dandy. Encourage the color to come over the edge just a little bit. All right. I don't know if you can see this on screen. But in this area here, we got some nice glitter going on. You can see the Cricut showing up, the film. And you're starting to see a lot more glitter in there too. So this is a, a very nice piece. I'm very happy with this. Let's see if I can get you out of the case and get you in for a closer look. So excuse me for a sec. Here we go. You can see some of the film showing up there, a lot of the little glitter there. Some more film peeking through. And that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted the color to be the star. I wanted some accents in there with some glitter on the Cricut film. That's kind of cool. So I'm gonna continue playing with these other hearts and have fun with this. Thanks. Hey everyone, I wanted to give you an update the next day after it cured. So I think this one turned out rather well. There's a little bit of the Cricut cut foil showing through that little holographic film. And you can see it in some of the cells very faintly in some of the other ones. But that's what I wanted. I wanted a little bit of an extra effect and I'm very, very happy with these. Uh, here are the other two that I did, and I just varied the intensity of uh, the different colors on each one. So you got different effects. This one probably showed most of the, the film coming through it. A big section over here, but each one of them has their own unique traits and characteristics. There's even a little bit of kind of a, an edge on this one too. So real happy. Hit the subscribe button and then hit that notification bell to get notified the next time I put a video up. And I'll see you next time. Later.